Well, good Monday morning to you folks. Hopefully things are going well with you. I hope you had a good weekend. Hope you had a good rest and you're ready to face today. Chapter 7 of 2 Corinthians. The Apostle Paul writes, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Receive us. We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. I speak not this to condemn you, for I have said before that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. Well, here we find the Apostle Paul uh, just about uh, to leave this world. And as he writes this letter, he's letting these folks know how much he loves them and how much he cares for them. And he's telling them, giving them instruction of what they should do, how they should cleanse themselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Now, we sometimes think, well, that's God's job to clean us. Well, he cleanses the heart. But then there are things that he also allows us to work on. You know, there's one place that Jesus said in the scripture to humble ourselves as little children in the sight of God. If we're to humble ourselves, I think often I'd rather humble myself than have him humble me. And even in his word, he says in one place, you would rather fall on this stone and be broken rather than have the stone fall on you and be shattered. Well, um... He gives us the ability uh, to walk in the path that he leads us. Do we always do that? Well, we should. Um, this is where we come with the excuse and we stand before God with him only seeing our heart. But we say, but God, you know my heart and you know I'm only human. And he does know that. But he still knows that there are things that when he speaks to us, and especially as believers, he says, George, you need to lay this down. Get away from this. This is no good for you. Walk away from it. Or, he says, George, you need to do this. Pick this up. This is what I want you to do. He speaks to me, but he gives me the ability, the choice to choose. And uh, I make the decision. I live with the consequences, too. But the thing is that other people, it affects them. If I don't do what God has for me to do, it affects other people, and as the, the witness that I were to shine a light for will not show. Now, will it come through someone else? It may. Uh, but for me, uh, I want to be like the Apostle Paul said. I want to put the flesh away and under subjection and draw close to the Lord. This song says, Going Home. Um, I've sang it probably, I don't know four or five times in the last 20 years or so. It's pretty common. People used to sing it all the time, but it's got a good meaning too. But one day we are going to be with the Lord. Many times in my childhood when we travel so far by nightfall how weary I'd grow Father's arm would slip round me, so gently he'd say, My child, we're going home. Going home, I'm going home. There's nothing to hold. For I've caught a glimpse of that heavenly land. Praise God, I'm going home. Now the twilight is fading, the day soon shall end. I get homesick the farther I've roamed. But my father 
has led me each step of the way and now he will lead me home going home I'm going home there's nothing to hold me here for I of that heavenly land praise God I'm going home Lord as we come to you we do pray that you would watch over and bless Lord you know the needs God that are here Lord and I pray to God that you will bless each and every one of us can grow closer to you and walk closer to you and live a life um, that would separate us from this world. That when people see us, like Brother Raymond preached the other night, that they will know that we are different because our walk is different, our talk is different. God, I pray that you would bless today in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, folks. See you Tuesday.